Good morning, or good afternoon, everyone, as the case may be. My name is Jan Cole, editor of Global Food Safety Resource, and I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webcast, sponsored by Global Food Safety Resource, also known as GFSR, and Safety Chain Software. Global Food Safety Resource is an online information hub that delivers trusted food safety solutions and expertise to food businesses involved in global supply chains. GFSR promotes best practices in food safety across all sectors of the food industry from farm to fork. And we're very excited to bring you today's event. Our webcast today is a live conversation followed by a Q&A with Nye Joel Hardy, Dole Fresh Vegetables Senior Food Safety Manager, and Barbara Levin, Safety Chain's SVP and co-founder. It will focus on how Dole Fresh Vegetables is leveraging innovative food safety chain management solutions to bring a fresh approach to its food safety initiatives. We know you'll find today's event informative and relevant, and with that, let me turn it over to Barbara Levin. Barb? Thank you very much, Jan, and welcome, everybody. Before we begin, let me give everybody just a few housekeeping announcements. Um, our webinar is being sponsored or hosted today, I should say, by WebEx. Should you require any technical assistance, if you're still online, you can simply go out of full screen to the Q&A tab and send a question, and our producer will respond to you. If you are having technical difficulties and not online, you can call WebEx Technical Support directly at 1-877-509-3239. Again, 877-509-3239. Many of you are listening to today's webcast through the speakers. If you're having problems with the audio, you can always use the call-in number that was provided to you in your confirmation email. We've already received a lot of questions from folks about the slides and recording, and you will, within 24 hours, receive an email that will allow you to download the slides and the recording, so everybody will receive those. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentations, and we'll stay on and try to get as many of those questions answered as possible. Also, for your privacy, we have hundreds and hundreds of people that are still dialing in and registered uh, for our event today, close to 800 people. Uh, for your privacy, you'll only be able to see the names of the speakers and producer as well as your own name. You will not be able to see the names of the other attendees. And so with that, <clears throat> let's talk about today's event. Today I'm going to be interviewing Nye Hardy, and I'll tell you a little bit more about her in just a minute. We're going to look at a case history of Dole Fresh Vegetables. We're going to talk about their overall approach to food safety, business drivers for automation, why they selected safety chains. We're going to discuss adoption in the field, how they were able to gain buy-in for the funding for this project, a little bit about preparing for FISMA, some of the early results and lessons learned, and what they are going to be doing in the future. Afterwards, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Safety Chain for Food, and then we will take your questions. With that, I'm really excited to be having uh, this conversation today with Nye. Nye is the Senior Food Safety Manager for Dole Fresh, Fr Fresh Vegetables. Excuse me. Um, she's responsible for field food safety programs in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Central, and South America. She's been with Dole for six years. Prior to that, she was a safety consultant and a government biologist and has a BA in biology from UC Santa Cruz and is completing her Master's of Food Safety. I am SVP and co-founder of Safety Chain, um, and I've been doing this for about 25 years, but enough about me because we really want to get to our main event here and start our conversation with Nye. So, Nye, first of all, welcome. We're so excited to have you here today. And I thought maybe you could start by just telling our audience a little bit about Dole Fresh Vegetables. Good morning, Barbara, and thank you so much for having me. Um, Dole Fresh Vegetables is one of, actually is the largest produce company on the planet with all of its separate divisions. And um, I work for the division called Dole Fresh Vegetables, uh, but other divisions do fresh fruits, um, uh, packaged foods, even flowers. 
and um, we specialize in doing salads. We're based in Monterey, California, and um, and we're one of basically eight companies that pretty much work independently of each other. But we are providing about 40% of the salad market right now for um, bagged salads. Wow. That's even I didn't realize that it that it was that large. That's fabulous. So I know we're going to speak a lot about your your initiatives that involve new technologies, but I, I think it's good to have a framework for that. So, um, you know, technology or no technology, there's technology only enables obviously an approach to food safety. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about you know the philosophy and the approach that you take when it comes to providing safe food. Well, um, I came in six years ago in response to the spinach crisis in 2006. And um, it really put vegetable food safety on the front line, and everyone realized that um, food safety really needed to be a priority for every single company and not just an adjunct to quality assurance, such as going out into the field and checking for quality and oh, by the way, do you think this is safe? Um, so it basically became a full-blown program immediately. And my take on it after be working in regulation and in training was that we needed to go for actual food safety, which meant not just turning in forms, not just lip service, not just throwing requirements at people, but doing everything we can to make sure that the requirements – safety things we knew worked were being done. So um, we inspect every field, every crew. We visit every grower before the season begins to make sure they understand what's going on and to help them with problems. And we act as a service rather than a police force. And um, we also do inspections and assessments of, uh, of our own, not just relying on what a supplier will turn in to us. Um, we... Um, we do this because we really want to take care of problems before they're really problems. Um, if you have a field that is too close to a dairy, I would much rather know about it before we spend tens of thousands of dollars developing that field and just say at the very beginning of the season, we don't want to take that. It's too close to cows and the things that cows produce that nobody wants to eat. Um, and, Additionally, um, I think when we do this, we need to make it really clear to people what we're doing so that they have confidence in what we're doing. And I've got a bullet point here that says transparency is fundamental. And sometimes transparency says we know everything, and sometimes it says we don't, because there are two aspects to food safety. There are the things that we have no control over. Things are grown outside. There are animals outside. It's exposed. It's not a closed environment. So our responsibility is to do everything that we can do to ensure food safety, which is to check fields, to do testing on water and pathogens and pesticides, to ensure that employees are trained in hygiene and sanitization and that they are um, um, supervised and trained appropriately and that we're inspecting them to make sure that that happens. And most importantly, when people ask for information, we need to give it to them so that they know we are doing what they need to be safe. Um, I think safety chain came in as a desperate need for us because not only do we need to provide that information, we need to provide it quickly, especially if there's an illness, especially if there's any kind of um, problem where you think you might be going into a recall because um, if there's any sort of delay, the normal assumption by the public, by the media, by lawyers, by the government, is that if you can't produce it immediately, you are hiding something, and they want to know what that is, and mm -hmm. it gets very weird at that point. That's a great foundation, then. That, that helps a lot. So given that approach, can you, can you sort of summarize, then, what were the business drivers uh, that, that – uh, made you say, you know, technology can help us um, with, with, our, with our food safety programs? Uh, mostly paperwork was driving us insane. 
um, because of the size of our business we and, and just our proactive approach to collecting everything and having everything on hand and checking it ourselves, um, we we were collecting over 20,000 documents a year. And that's a lot to be filing in Windows files or or even some of our some of our people were giving us hard copies and it was just piling up really really quickly and it was and it was difficult to pull everything together consistently all of the time um, and and additionally we, there was a lag from when we found stuff out to when we needed to do corrective actions so in addition to um, having to collect paperwork, having difficulty finding it, we also were not responding as quickly as I would have had us responding. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so we needed, we needed a, something that would help us with that. Um, additionally, we do 100% auditing on all of our suppliers. So every single ranch, every single harvesting crew, Every single cooler and packing shed has to have a GFSI compliant audit um, annually, and we also monitor those and make sure that they meet our expectations. And sometimes our expectations are different than the audit because the audit may say it's okay. And like you know what, I still don't like that. That needs to change, and you know we also have to follow that. And that's another paper trail to follow up on. And um, lastly, when it comes down to the wire, when you need to, you're being asked to cough up everything you know about a field, when FDA is knocking on your door, um, you want to have all of the information as close to when it happened on hand or be able to um, be able to go and grab it. So um, it's, it just, we have, it, was frustrating to me in the beginning of this job knowing that we had the information and it took so long to unearth it to get it to people that it looked like we didn't know what we were doing when we did have everything. And, and also, and also yeah, that's a lot of stress. <laughs> and, and also for things like performance trends, that, that's that's a lot of paper, and I think everybody could could to the the recall issue. So, you know, we know that, you know, that you're implementing uh, technology in phases, some things that you've done already, some things that you're planning to do, but let's take some of those challenges that you and the business drivers that you just outlined. I think everybody uh, can, can relate to those. I think if we were live, everybody's head would be nodding right now. Um, but let's look at some of these and, you know, maybe look at, you know, how it's before and where it's going to be or where it is with the implementation of technology. So supplier compliance is huge. So how how was that before and how is that going to be with safety chains? Well, right now we, we like, physically write two manuals, one in Spanish and one in English. And then when we have changes, we go into a Word document and we make changes and then we update the front page so everyone knows what the changes are. And then we email it out to everybody. And then at the beginning of the season, we go and check and make sure they received it. And um, we're looking forward to getting a lot of that um, where it will be um, automated. And that will not only save my staff time, but it will. I think it'll be more efficient at making sure everybody gets exactly what they're supposed to need. Um, the other thing is we do tons. Isn't really a technical term. A lot of inspections <laughs> each year. Um, we we are always going out to verify things are in place and and doing validations. And it's a lot of paperwork. Um, to do, my staff will go out, do the report, come back to the office, write up the report, and, you know, add their photographs. We do a lot of photographs. And um, Safety Chain has started building for us these beautiful programs that um, let us do things in the field on the fly and also um, notify people when there's a problem. So, for instance, if I have a sampler out there pulling samples for for um, um, pathogens, 
and he comes to a field that's filled with um, seagulls and their associated things you don't want to eat, um, he needs to let everybody know we need to flag the field off and not harvest it and find another field. Um, the faster we do that, the better off we are because there's a lot of logistics in harvesting. You have to get the crew out there. You, everything has to be at the right age to pick. And if he automatically does the report and it clicks a no box, we have a problem, it goes immediately to me and we go right to action on it instead of maybe in the past waiting till someone could give a phone call or worst case scenario coming in on Monday and finding out it happened on Saturday. Mm. Um, you know, so it's just really, it's, it's just really where our program should be. Great. Um, I, I think you started to address this a little bit, but um, what about the way that you're conducting assessments and, and you know, to your, to your point that you just made, getting information to people for corrective actions in real time? Um, do you want to add anything to that a little bit about how it's happening now and, um, and how it will happen? Well, I have a couple of levels of staff members. I have samplers who are just basically the guys who go out in the field, pick pieces of leaves, and take them to a lab to see if there's any pathogens on them. And then I have another row of um, food safety specialists who are basically biologists who, who do more sophisticated evaluations of fields um, and are responsible for training and overseeing everybody else um, to make sure that they're in compliance. And um, a lot of their time has, is spent doing documentation because if it's do not documented, it never happened. And the way it is now is you would either have to handwrite a report and then just scan it in and put it in the computer or put it in a file so someone can find it, or, or um, you come back to the office, um, you're no longer in the field checking what's going wrong, so you are putting your report into a computer. And the, what Safety Train has built for us is these um, basically apps that have our forms in the field and both the samplers and the biologists can go through and answer all the questions on their, their smartphone and their black, we have a couple of Blackberries and they can do that in the field. It immediately sends it out. It takes pictures. And again, if it hits anything that's a problem, it flags me and I know immediately. It, I get an email immediately. So um, I mean, to me, that's just what computers should do for you. And, and I, so I'm really excited about using that. And what we've had is working very well so far. And we're adding more forms because we, we do several kinds of reports. So we keep adding stuff. And your suppliers can can and will be able to send information in any format, correct? We're not asking them to change the way that they're right. doing Right. Well, right now, I'm just, I'm at, at this stage with Safety Chain, um, the forms I'm asking for are just from my own employees. But as we integrate the entire system and we're collecting documentation from people, it's going to be very nice to be able to take it in any form. Because we still have, you know, there's a huge range of farmers, of growers out there. There's people who have their own food safety staff that are larger than my own. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're really on top of it. They know how to do everything. They're, they're there. Um, we still have farmers who are running their business off the dash of their truck. And, um, you know, fax, faxing is still new technology for them. And so we need to make it as usable by everybody who can um, work with us as possible because um, the technology should not be getting in the way of, you know, doing the right thing. So sure. um, the, the collection will be extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the food industry's favorite topic, audits. <laughs> I know that you said that you do hundreds of them. Uh, and all different types, and I know you've told me you do a lot of internal audits. Um, how is that today or before, and, and what will that look like uh, with your technology? Well, right now we do have um, an audit database with our auditing company, um, and but it isn't integrated with everything else in a way that, for instance, if 
if somebody called me and goes, we just purchased this from you. We want to know exactly where it came from. We want to see the audits. We want to see all the written food safety information on it. And we want to see the preseason harvest because we, we, we're checking you to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. Right now, I would have to go to about three different sources to pull that information, possibly four. And um, having everything in one place where we can just enter the field location and it all comes up um, saves what I consider valuable time. Because to me, what a food safety staff needs to be doing all of the time is looking for problems, taking care of problems, and, you know, preventing things from happening. And anytime they're doing stuff that I consider basically clerical, it is really um, a misuse of, of what wonderful resources they are. Mm -hmm. So you want your analysts spending time um, analyzing data instead of entering data, it sounds like. Right. Uh, well, when I first started here, um, I had... Uh, a director above me and myself, we were it. And mm -hmm. I was trying to do everything. You know, I would go out and do the field inspections and I'd come home and write the reports and I'd file the water tests and everything. And I finally told them, you know, I can do all of this, but I am an extremely expensive secretary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, hey, it, it's, it's like, I can do it. It, it's not that I can't physically do this. It's that you don't want me doing this. So we did get a full-time coordinator, but um, it, it was, but I think it's an ongoing issue that most companies will have, which is um, you have all this stuff. You have to be able to find it again. <laughs> I, and I think that's such a good point. I, and, and you hit on something that I think is interesting you know, not everybody is 100% manual. There, there are companies that have systems, but usually the information is in three or four systems. It's, they don't talk to each other. I have a colleague who likes to say just because something is electronic doesn't mean it's automated. And, um, <laughs> and I think that's a very good point. So having everything in a central repository kind of changes, uh, changes that. Let me see here. I'm trying to get to the next question. And well, there we go. So, you know, there's a lot of companies out there. We don't want to turn this into, you know, a, a sales pitch. But but I, I think it would be uh, important to to talk a little bit about why why did you select Safety Chain? Um, the biggest thing is I asked for things and actually got them. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible. Imagine. We, we, de we, desperately, we desperately needed a system that would work. And, and one of the challenges that we weren't quite sure what all the ramifications of that system were. So um, when I initially met with Safety Chain, it's like, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. And so, you know, we built some models and then we played with them in the field and like, oh, no, this is what I want. And so it got changed instead of like, no, it's locked in. You have to live with it. Um, it, it it's been a collaborative process that is actually meeting our needs. So it's not so much as, you know, buying a black box that will do everything I want, but doing um, working within a program that can actually do the things I want it to do. And if it doesn't, I, I have a say in making it do so. And to me, it's customer service, basically, which I think is just crucial. The other thing is because it's web-based, um, we can access it from everywhere. And I have literally had calls from FDA requesting information, and my entire staff has been in airports in different parts of the country. And it's like, well, let me work with the coordinator who's going to need some help pulling this up. But, you know, long-distance phone calls, you know, hours of time difference, it, it was really unpleasant. And it would re it's really nice to be able to say, oh, I'm sitting here in Phoenix Airport, I can go to my safety chain website and verify that for you right now. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, that, it just, um, I, I don't, is it fair to say it reduces a lot of stress? <laughs> and <laughs> I, and I, I, I know, I, I know my, Primary, my primary concern is food safety and always will be. I think my second one is stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it reduces a lot of stress. Good. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Now, you know, there, 
there's a lot of, you know, as you said, diversity in, in workforces, uh, you know, in the food industry. And yet you've told me that, that you did not have resistance to using technology. Can you tell, you know, our listeners uh, a little bit, maybe, you know, leave some of those fears about, you know, will people use technology because yours apparently are? Right. Well, I do have staff members who are non-English speaking, um, who do not have higher education, not, not high, do not have high school, who do field work for us. And they are the first people on the scene. So if there's something wrong, they're, they're a perfectly good set of eyes to report something. So we um, train them to do pre-season harvest assessments, uh, the pre-harvest assessments. And um, when we moved to the um, platform where, where they could use their blackberries, um, they actually liked it a great deal. Um, and, and, because it's really beautifully set up, and I think you're showing an example later, mm-hmm. is that um, we um, um, it, it's easy for them to use, and and it's not buggy. And I don't if you've worked with other programs, you know when it doesn't work, you just get to the point where you won't even use it. So once we went, um, we trained them on it and went out with them on it and got them comfortable, it seemed really easy. And it just saved so much time that, you know, e- even that little bit of nervousness someone has over it that, that goes away when they realize they're, they don't have to sit in a truck doing paperwork for half an hour. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's been a really good experience. Excellent. Um, You know, everybody knows that the food industry is not a high profit margin industry, um, but you did have to, you know, and I will say that this is an affordable solution, but, you know, it's not free, right? So you have to go out and get uh, buy-in. How how did you build your business case to get buy-in for um, for purchasing technology? Well, um, the first thing is my my biologists are an expensive and just invaluable resource and every time they're in the office every time they're in a truck driving to or from a location I don't feel they're being used at, at, the, at their maximum value so if you take the amount of time you have to come back to the office you have to write up a report that could be up to two to three hours out of your work day and if you have you know four people doing that that adds up as to lost productive hours really, really quickly. Um, and also, it means that there's a lot of reports that don't have to be reviewed or checked or, you know, spending time seeing where you are with follow-ups. And it, it just saves us a huge amount of um, efficacy on what we can get done because, Fortunately, at Dole, it wasn't. My department doesn't have to make money. I even get to spend more money than other departments do, which is rare in the ag industry. But we need to give um, our company and our customers a level of confidence that we are doing everything that we can to make sure things are as safe as possible for our customers. Great, thank you. Well, the you know the long-awaited. Uh, FISMA rules have come out. There's the preventive control rule and the produce rule. Um, how is this impacting your operations? Um, actually, a lot of FISMA was basically based on uh, the California-Arizona Leafy Greens Marketing Agreement, which we've been a part of for six years now. Um, so we have most of this stuff in place already, and I've integrated it into our manual, so when our customers follow our manual, they can also they are also meeting FISMA requirements and um, their audit requirements at the same time. Um, but again, I am really looking forward to getting those changes out there quicker and easier for people to work with. So I, I'm very much looking forward to that. Well, 
what are, what are some of the results that you've seen so far? And, you know, there's a lot of folks in the audience that are preparing uh, to implement technology and evaluate technology. Anything that you can tell them as a lesson to maybe make their path just uh, one step easier? Well, <laughs> this is, I'm not going to sound really clever saying this, but be comfortable in owning up to what you don't know. <laughs> it's um, You may have an idea of what you want, and it, it's formed in your head as like a um, project, but there's a lot of little details that it doesn't hurt to know that you don't know what the details are so that you can discuss them with whoever is working with you, your own staff, um, whatever company you're using to um, uh, support you, um, because sometimes it just takes discussion. And I, I was, it's like, I, I'm always amazed that I learn something new in agriculture every day. But I think the biggest lesson was, oh, that didn't work. We need to do something else because it's a very practical environment. It's like, just because you think something should work doesn't mean it works. <laughs> and um, you have to not get attached to an idea, but get attached to what gets it done. Mm -hmm. You and I have discussed that, that you, know, you don't always want to make technology mimic an inefficient paper process. You want to be flexible to say, oh, maybe this is a faster and better way to do it. Yes, and that, that's like, wait a minute, this isn't working. It, it, oh, well, the biggest cue to me is when I said I wanted things automated, and you made a beautiful point about the difference between, you know, um, electronics and automation. If, if something is automated, it should be faster and easier than doing it by hand. Mm -hmm. if, just, if, yeah. it, if it's easier to do it yourself, the, to me, that system is not working. That, that's a good point. What are some of the results that you've had so far? Um, well, right now, I think it's right now our, the program we have right now in place is the preseason assessment, and it's just given my field guys a lot more time, and I can actually assign them to other assignments, um, cool. w which is very nice because – Although they're not biologists, they know what a broken pump looks like. <laughs> they know what a tipped over porta potty looks like, you know, and I can send them. I go, well, if you have some free time, can you please go down by the river and check all the fields there? And so they're starting to find a lot more that we would have never found otherwise. Great. Thank you. Let's let's just, you know, show people what it looks like a little bit. What are we what are we looking at here, Nye? Well, um, when when the samplers go out, they have to answer some questions about the general condition of the field, and that report lets us know if we want to harvest or not, or if there's parts or all of the field we need to take out. So we have a list of questions, and this is in our field section. We also have a water section, an employee section, and and um, so this question is asking: Is it free of compost? That it, you know cow or chicken manure that's been composted, actual manure, which we don't allow near fields at all, and trash, which um, harbors um, pests that can get into the field. And um, so they have that choice of saying, yes, it is free. No, it is not free. Or, you know what? I was too busy. I didn't look for it, <laughs> which is a perfectly legitimate answer. I would much rather have them say they didn't look for it than, than to make up a yes or no answer that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, if if right. it clicks, yeah, if they click on the yes button, um, another screen will come up that says explain what the problem is. And it can be very easy as, you know, um, tipped over trash can 20 feet away from field by house. And then it asks, do you want to take a photograph? And usually they say yes because they love doing that. And it will attach a, a, um, a photo of the trash tipped over near our field. Um, and it, then because it's been marked yes, instead of going straight into a database, um, it, flags, it flags me and the biologist 
to let them know that there's a field issue that we need to look at immediately and make a and decision so on how we, we, yeah, yeah, and so make a decision on how we're going to deal with it. Mhm. And then it goes through this for all of your different safety questions. So if it's if it says no, we're not free of compost, then then you get that information and then you can decide on a corrective action in real time, correct? Right. And I can look at the picture and I can go, oh, that's far enough away from the field. I don't think it's an issue. I usually don't do that because I'm paranoid. <laughs> but but or I can say, no, we need to we need to tell the harvesters to buffer it. I want them to stay 50 feet away from it. Or we need to contact the grower or the homeowner to get that cleaned up. And, you know, so I have, I have options as soon as it's seen instead of perhaps the harvesters getting out there and then trying to decide what to do and possibly cutting into what they can do for their day's work. Excellent. Okay. And what are we looking at here? The happy part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this That's is the um, part. <laughs> well, the other plus of having these reports done in the field is, the old way is our guys would do them, bring them in, we would look at them, and we would file them. And because there were so many of them and they were handwritten, they were usually put in by date. And now they automatically go into this um, database that we can search on. So we can search on a date, we can search on a crop, we can search on a location, uh, we can um, search on a sampler and pull up that report immediately to see see what the status of it is. Um, it comes up immediately. It gives you all the photos. It gives you a document that you can send to people. Um, so it's not just like in an Excel spreadsheet form, but it actually gives you a document that, you know, is, is what we need to provide in our business. So it, it's just, again, it's very quick. It feels very modern and where we're supposed to be. Excellent, thank you. Um, I know that you've got future phases, and one of the things that you are going to be doing is traceability. Can you tell us a little bit about what your goals are for that phase? Well, traceability is so absolutely crucial in our business because there's two things that can happen. You can know exactly what was in your product, or you don't. And if you know exactly where everything came from, if you are forced to do a recall, um, you want to recall as little as possible because it gets expensive when you have to recall everything. And, and traceability allows us to break down to the block, not just the field, but the block of where product came from. And it links to the paperwork that we've already done to show, you know, if FDA comes to us and goes, well, you're doing a recall. Please show us what you did to try to make sure this field was safe. Because remember, there's two aspects to food safety, stuff you can do and then stuff you have no control over. And so we have to show what we had control over. That's all that documentation, all of the harvest records, all of the training records. for, the, And um, this traceability needs to follow the product all the way through from the field into the cooler, into the packing shed, into the um, plant, whatever it's being done. So if you have eight different products in a bag, you have to be able to have them all linked together. And then once it leaves, there needs to be a way to track it um, the, the going forward. So um, having a system that is not – is – inclusive of every step of that is just really crucial as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Well, right now, that <clears throat> I think this has been really, really informative. I know that folks in our audience have a lot of questions for you. Uh, I, I'm very excited uh, about the information that you just shared, some that I didn't know and realized how large some of these operations are. I'm going to take just a, a few minutes to talk to folks about the solution, Safety Chain for Food, and then we're going to come back and take questions. What I'm going to do right now is take us out of full screen so that um, folks can see the Q&A tab and we can start to get questions queued up while I'm telling about Safety Chain. So everybody on the lower right-hand side of your screen right now, 
you should see a Q&A box, and you can, um, excuse me, you can enter your questions and then hit send, and we'll have those queued up for Nye um, when we get through this next part here. So Nye is using some of the modules of Safety Chain's Safety Chain for Food solution. This is a comprehensive FSQA solution that covers um, all of food safety quality <clears throat> assurance needs um, upstream and downstream in your particular supply chain with supplier compliance, COA and spec management, reporting and scorecards, safety and quality data management, HACCP program automation, GFSI compliance, and customer compliance and finished product testing. Uh, this is a cloud solution that really does promote the transparency uh, that is so important today and that, that NIE addressed. And there's really four main benefits. Uh, this really helps, obviously, enforce safety and quality compliance standards and specifications. All of that information is then in a central repository of time and date stamp data that's available uh, to respond to customers and, of course, audits, and very important to do performance trending and analysis. Um, it creates a lot of operational efficiencies, uh, some that we just heard about um, in eliminating manual processes and errors. Uh, by being able to really do the trending and performance and identify risks, you can go a long way in helping to prevent withdrawals and rejections and recalls. And ultimately, really what this does is protect your market value and brand. I always say a picture is worth a thousand words. And if I had to tell you what the true difference with Safety Chain is, it's a very proactive focus system versus reactive. So think about this, this uh, smoke alarm in the sky that is getting the right information to the right people in the fastest manner possible so that corrective actions can be taken versus going back after the fire uh, and trying to figure out where the problem started and how to repair that damage. And that can be having to um, destroy product because there was a contaminated ingredient and didn't find out in time, uh, to losing customers, to losing public confidence, and, you know, in the very worst cases, making people sick. Getting buy-in for technology really depends on return on investment. And we find that there are four areas that produce both hard dollar savings and soft savings. There's hard dollar savings when it comes to time and labor savings. Um, when you can prevent uh, contaminated ingredients from going into production or take a corrective action before an ingredient becomes uh, not usable, um, you get good product performance and a higher yield. There's a lot of ROI in risk mitigation and, again, preventing those uh, rejections and withdrawals. And, of course, performance trending and analysis, which helps you identify things like the best suppliers that are giving you the highest quality at the lowest cost. And that's all I'm going to say about Safety Chain because we're going to tell you how to get more information. I see a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to start to throw those to you in a minute, and I, for those of you who have to leave us today, let me just give you some important information here, and then we're going to come back and get to all of your questions. But I do know I'm getting some chats from folks that are um, wanting to know some of this information. If you'd like to follow up with Nye specifically, she's been generous enough uh, to provide her email address if you have questions directly for her, and you can see that there. Within 24 hours, you will get an email that will allow you to download uh, the slides and the recording. Uh, you'll get a form that will pop up at, uh, when you leave this webinar, and you'll also be able to do this on the email that has the slides and the recording um, that can allow you to request a private demo, more information, uh, pricing, and ROI calculation. We've got some fabulous events coming up. Um, on March 14th, Paul Ryan, uh, who was the executive director of the SQF board, um, is going to talk about FSQA responsibilities along the supply chain and how to take a preventative approach to FSQA. And uh, also on April 25th, Kathy Crawford from HACCP Consulting Group is going to talk about how to show continuous improvement in your SQF program. 
And last but certainly not least, our host and sponsors today, Global Food Safety Resource. If you'd like to sign up for their e-newsletter and get communications and other special offers from industry partners, you can go to their website. You see the URL there and become a member. And I'll leave that up there. And with that, let's just start jumping into these many questions. Now, we have a question from Larry asking, what pathogen testing do you do and how do you manage it? Oh, that, that's the tricky part, the managing. Um, for all, we test all leafy, lots of leafy greens for um, three things. Um, enterohemorrhagic E. coli, um, which is several species of, of the bad E. coli. 0157, which is like the Rottweiler of bad E. coli and salmonella species. Um, the way we do this is I have samplers in the field seven days a week pulling samples um, just prior, um, two or three days prior to harvest, and um, they take it to the lab. The lab gets us results back in 14 hours. Biologists review the results, and we tell harvest that they are, are allowed to harvest or they're not allowed to harvest based on the results. So okay. if, it's, if it's a positive result, we do not, we do not harvest. Okay, Don is uh, saying that you mentioned that if certain conditions occurred, that you were alerted. Um, and John's asking what ways can we be alerted. From, from the system point of view, everything that you've said there, John, text, text messages, email, um, an auto phone call pop-up, uh, are you using all of those now or are you getting your alerts, your alerts in, in just one or two different ways? Well, email, email's working really well for me, so I'm fine with that. Um, but I think it would be what kind of technology a company is using and what would be best for them because when we discussed it building the program, it was like, what do you need? And they gave me what I needed. Mm -hmm. Great. And that leads into the next question. Once you got buy-in for the product, um, you know, I know that you mentioned building. Um, you know, the system uh, is a product and it's configured for uh, for each person. Um, how long was it before you, you know, started to actually go into testing and use the system? Um, we went into, um, I think, I, I'm not good at dates. And it was about two or three months. And mm -hmm. part of it wasn't necessarily safety changes because you have to be a good partner in building these things, which means you need to be present. And um, when they had the system ready, we were in the middle of transition. We were moving to another growing region, which meant I wasn't available for a lot of those, we need to fix this call <laughs> calls. Um, so I think it would have probably been a month shorter without that. Um, mm -hmm. But we started using it as soon as it was up. Um, and basically we let the samplers tell us what worked, what didn't work. And then, um, I had my biologists also go through it to see what worked, what didn't work. And probably a month after that, we went live. Okay, great. Thank you. And John, what I'll say is, um, you know, implementation can take anywhere from two months, uh, to six months. And it depends on those modules. Uh, some folks, um, they want to just implement the entire solution, and they want to do it all at once. Um, other folks want to implement in phases. So, you know, we can we can walk you through what that would look like. Uh, during the transition um, from the time that you started to you know, test to be, uh, and before you went live, um, did you keep the old method where you're doing things in parallel before you were confident to just go automated? Oh, yes, because I'm paranoid. <laughs> it's like I wanting something to work and being sure it is works it was, were two different things, and I really believe in redundancy. <laughs> so we did. We, we are not anymore because, because it, the program showed to us it was working the way we wanted to. But, yes, we were doing, we were doing both systems until we were comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Penelope is asking how the security of the info and data is maintained, and I can address that by saying this is a cloud-based solution. Um, every client has their own uh, security parameters. Um, it's a very highly secure solution. There's disaster recovery. 
Um, and, you know, think about cloud-based solutions today. People are doing online banking. If you look at our paychecks online, uh, the system is uh, very highly secure, and that's maintained. You own your own data, but it's maintained by Safety Chain. Do you want to add anything to that, uh, Nai? Um, no, I, I'm not really very knowledgeable in that, and I've always had issues with our own IT because they're going, well, what about the security of it? And I, I'm going, we're transparent. Everyone can see it. <laughs> um, that being said, um, we have had no no issues with the security, <laughs> with safety chain. But to me, um, part of transparency is, is having that information available to whoever wants to see it. I Never really would it. prefer not to be hacked for it, but um, it should be available. Right, and that that is something that's configured, you know, per customer. Um, you know, you want anybody to be able to log in and see it. Others don't. Um, the security parameters are individually configured. Um, Darshan is asking, is there a pre-harvest assessment inspection done after pathogen, pathogen testing, meaning just before harvest as well? Actually, that's a good question. It's done at exactly the same time. Um, while they're doing the pathogen testing, they're surveying field situations. Then they do a drive around. The, they've walked through the field doing the test. They're looking for things. And then they look after it. And this is only two days before. Then on the day of harvest, the harvest foreman does an additional thing to see if anything else has happened since then. Great. Right. Uh, John is asking if Dole is expanding beso uh, beyond Nye's business unit, and I know that we are talking to several other uh, business units at Dole, and um, I think as Nye had said that they operate as different businesses, but we are speaking with, um, with several others. Uh, Nye, have you uploaded any of your standard operating procedures, and if so, who does that upload? Um, no, I haven't, and the way I would like it, it's, it's, it's in the process of being built right now, and we expect that to be rolling out in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. and, and when that's configured, um, we are a software-as-a-service company, um, heavy emphasis on service, and while you can upload your own, most clients don't have a lot of extra time on their hands. Um, and that's part of what we do for our customers is upload those, change them, um, and also there's auto notifications for the standard operating procedures. Right. Yeah. And so, so you know, we can make sure things get done with those auto notifications. Um, Power, you're asking about being used in the milk or dairy processing um, industry and what are some of the unique opportunities. I'm going to have um, our FSQA expert, Dan Bernkopf, uh, get to you privately after the webinar. He will be much more able to answer that question uh, than I am, but I want you to know that I do see your question there, and we'll make sure that we get an answer uh, to you. Uh, Leticia is, is um, making a comment and asking a question, and, and I think a lot of people are worrying about this, that um, there's, there's still, you know, the food safety and that food business is, you know, is behind some other industries with adopting technology, although we're seeing technology being adopted um, in great, great numbers uh, now because of the efficiencies. But, you know, there's still some nervousness about there. What, what helped you get over that, that hump nigh and realize that technology was going to be necessary uh, moving forward? Um, it was something I, because I'm a science fiction writer, it just seemed like the way to go for me, but convincing other people um, that that is what we needed to do is hard. And I think the big thing is to um, let people just see, not make them do it, but show them what it is. And for instance, with some of my samplers who were nervous, you can write it down on paper, and at the same time, you can do it on this. I'm not going to force you to do something that's uncomfortable, because if, if it was really that uncomfortable, it wouldn't work. And, and I know with a lot of policies we've put in place um, for food safety, 
and working with people who are not familiar with regulations or requirements or certain kinds of paperwork or certain kinds of testing procedures. Um, it take, it, it, again, there's a level of transparency you need to have and to let them see the corollary. Here is the automation. Here is it being done by hand. And it allows them to buy in is when they decide everything's okay, not when you tell them it's okay. Mm-hmm. So the, the, everyone, and everyone has a different point for that to come, but my other motto for food safety is food safety always wins. We there always get our way. So um, I, I'm just patient. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because I know I will win. <laughs> I like that attitude, Nye. Uh, Dan is asking, are you using PCR or a standard plate method? And please tell me you know what that means. I do know what that means. Um, that we're using a um, IEH's PCR method, and if it's negative, it's negative. If we get an initial reactive, then they plate it out, okay. which will take more time just to verify that it's um, whether it's a pathogen or not. Okay, excellent. And I am going to take a look here, but I think that might have been the last question. Let me just do a quick scroll here. And yes, that was. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for spending time with us today and for all those fabulous questions. Nye, this has been really informative and enjoyable, and we just can't thank you enough for sharing your experience. I hope you don't get too inundated with emails, but thank you so much for volunteering your email address for those people that would like to follow up with you. Thank you very much, and everybody have a fabulous day. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.